Good morning. So we're working on the monitor. Um, the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding AG Grid. I think we'll do that after we get the TCP set up here. So right now, um, I have it set up so that each one of these app client applications has their own OAuth token. You can set this alert, and then you can go ahead and issue an HTTP uh, post out. This is another test message, and send it. And you can see. that it pro propagated immediately on the website since we're using SignalR for the data transfer layer. So this works pretty well. One thing I don't like is that these requests are not done with enumerators, where they're done with enumerators instead of something that's parsing them. So if I was to look at my library for my requests of my alert create request, this means that I can move all of these projects into my lib internal. Okay, so now when I look at my alert create request, I'm going to change this to be a string. And I'm going to change this to be a string. And I'm going to say for this, the status type of the alert, and we're going to say possible values, and they can be online or they could be offline. Okay, this is going to be the alert type of the alert. And we can say my possible values here are debug info warning alert or error. And this is going to be the message or payload attached to the um, alert. Get rid of these here, and I'm going to move these also to be in the internal. And then in my project dependency, I can get rid of it off of the lib here because it doesn't need that one. Okay. Right now, posting from Postman or directly into the browser URL, both are going in as JSON. I can post the raw error if you'll allow me to hyperlink. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, if you want to, if you want to send some code in um, Pastebin, exactly.
Can you send me the model that you're passing in? And your controller method. Also your controller method. Okay, so now we can get rid of this. And then this alert, we want to change this to be a status type, an alert type, and a message. We're also going to add in here the timestamp of the alert. And these are strings. And then we can get rid of this client application ID. And then this is going to be the username of the application user. And this is going to be on application user data transfer object. This one's going to be on alert data transfer object. This one's going to be a on a base data transfer object. And this is going to be the unique identifier of the uh, of the uh, of the data transfer object. And then in requests. We want to do the same thing here with this update request. The so status type, alert type, and message. We want these to be strings. We want this to be on alert, update request. This is going to be on alert create request and this is going to be a base create request and this last one is a base update request and this is going to be the ID of the record of the requested record to update okay so that's done. So let's go ahead and clean up our references here. Okay. Two. Three, so these update request needs to be a two string. Same thing here. And we'll rebuild it. And now what I want to do is look at my mapper. Auto map. And when we convert alert to an alert DTO, that's fine. I want to do a form member, and this is going to be my
for remember alert type and for status type. We want to do a option where we map it from my T dot alert type dot to string. And then we want to do one more here for a status type like that. And then on this one, we're going to say for my member and this one's going to be alert type. We want to set this to be a enum dot Enum dot parse No. We're going to do this one differently is that I want to do my parsing in my uh, data access layer service. And so where I'm doing my create alert, we're going to do our map here. And then I want to say and my enum dot par try parse of my request dot and this is a type of um, alert type and it's going to be a request dot alert type and we want to do an out var alert type and we do this one again for the status type. Then you can do a entity dot alert type equals alert type and an entity dot status type. Equals status type. Why does this look funny to me? Just checking something. So let me just make sure I'm doing this right. Because I think I need to just cast this. Yeah. So this is a This is a um, alert type and this is a status type. 
Okay, we need to do the same thing on our update. So we're going to check. That's your IDs match. So right here. Because this is now going to be entity dot alert type equals alert type alert type. And this one's going to be entity. I see the messages there. Give me just a second to finish this. And then we'll take a look. Equals status type dot status type. Okay, let's go ahead and test it by running all my tests. Okay, it says everything is failing now. I don't know why it would be doing that. Create alert async test. Is it because this is trying to add an alert? That's okay. So it's failing on there. Can't insert the value null into column timestamp. Column does not allow nulls. So let's go look at this. Oh crap. I see what's wrong. Okay, so this needs to also include a Timestamp. And then that needs to be the same thing here. And then also on this alert on this project one. And then on the client application one. And then on the alert one. Now we'll run it again. And the add log also needs to have a timestamp. Okay, let's run it again. Okay, that fixed almost all of them. So this time, when we get down to the read, I bet it's going to be a mapping problem. Just second thing, bot labs. I just want to get these tests fixed and then we'll fix it.
So I don't think it's getting that far. Yeah, no worries. I'm just, uh, I, I'm trying to get this thing here. Hey, we add the project. We add the client application. It says no. Read alert test through an exception. It's read alert async test. So now if I look at this thing, my project has timestamp, project name, application user, an ID. So that one worked. Then we're going to add this project app, this client application. Active client description, client name, OAuth token, project ID is visible. Oh, it's this. And then it kicks through and it reads the alert. And it commits it and it works. So I think it's fixed now. Let's go ahead and try running all the tests again. And we're good to go now. So if I was to now look at this one final time. When I look at my Web API, we can authorize it in. And now this time it wants me to, it doesn't include any of the parameters. So to do that, what I want to do is look at my library here and I want to add under debug, under build, documentation file. And then when this runs, it should grab the documentation on everything from the way I typed it in. Think about labs, you still there? We're about to do it.
See, and this is good, and now it tells me my top possible values here of online or offline. So now when I do this, I can set my status type to be nothing, my alert type to be debug, and my message to be that, and this should fail. Bad request. And we now want to say that this one is a online, and we'll execute it. We got a 400 on it. Yep, still here. Okay, just about there. When I look at what's happening in the alert create, when we go to this create alert, It says that it wasn't able to parse out alert or status type. So does that because it needs to be capital? Yes, that's why. So that's a 200. So now what I want to do is in a num, try parse, C example, C sharp, case insensitive. says that there's another parameter on here which is ignore case and we can just put that as true here and now it's fixed okay let's take a look now at what uh, thinkbot labs is looking at here so this is our controller So you've got your model, oh, I'm sorry, this is your model. This is your controller. And this is your auto mapper. Okay. So when I look at this, you're saying that your ID is required and what you are passing in I think there's something wrong with your JSON because this should say ID and then a GUID and then it should say name and then Darth Vader. You don't have a GUID being assigned here. So I'm assuming you're not passing a new GUID. Name is required, date of birth is required, address is required, and the accounts. Can you try changing this GUID to a string? And then this is happening on your post, which is create owner from body. I think it's because your GUID here is a, like this, if you change this to a string, then it can be nullable. And then I think it'll work. Try that. Okay.
Yeah, 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 no problem. Try it. Just, just try it. Try changing the GUID to a string, and then I bet it'll just work. Just try it. And then what that means is that you can make that GUID with a question mark after it, and that way it can be nullable. Okay, so we're in pretty good shape here. All the tests are running and working. So the next thing that I want to do is we are going to get started on our TCP connections.